It's coming. What's on that? Shall I? Okay, guys. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone is doing good. So now, I just want to tell you that we are going to start a series of lectures on pathology. So that in the next 30 days, in 30 classes, I should say, we'll be completing the entire pathology. Okay, the entire pathology, what is needed for your exams, that will be done in the next 30 classes. This is the class one. So. In this class one, we are going to start with the basics. We are going to start with the general pathology and what general pathology starts with the basic chapter that is the cell injury, right? So if you go through these 30 classes, I will be covering all the important topics that will be coming in your exam. Mainly I am going to teach you keeping exam in mind. I will be giving you the clinical examples also wherever the clinical examples are needed wherever the clinical questions need to be integrated that will be done in the classes having said that without any further late let's begin the class okay so hello everyone how are you elastus see me good afternoon everyone okay we are from which country here it is almost night shradanjali Good evening. Hope everyone is doing well. Now, if you have any doubts, you can all the time ask me in the chat session. So having said that, now our chapter is cell injury, right? So what happens if the cells are injured? And how many types of cell injury are there? Reversible cell injury and irreversible cell injury. Okay, and how many types of cell death are there? There's a necrosis and apoptosis. Everything will be covered in this class. Okay, so. Let's begin our topic. See, this is our poor cell which got injured. Okay. So now let's maybe <coughs> let me begin. So let's look at here. This is your normal cell. Okay, imagine there is a normal cell which is under homeostasis. Everything is perfectly all right. Everything is perfectly all right, sir. Now, when you try to give some stress to it, okay, when you are trying to give some stress to it some kind of microbiological stress or radiological stress or doesn't matter you are stressing the cell sir okay now when you are stressing the cell wherein you are keeping the cell in a stress environment first cells will try to undergo adaptation okay so usually when i am giving you excessive work for example you are working under me imagine the superintendent is giving excessive work for the interns okay so whenever there is so much of work what you will try to do First, you will try to adapt yourself to the environment. Even the cells will do the same thing. Cells will try to adapt okay, for the stress. If the stress is still coming, the stress is increasing day by day, now the cells will give up. Okay, now the cells are getting injured. Okay, so if cell adaptation fails, the inability to adapt, okay, failure to adapt will cause cell injury. Okay, cell injury, sir. Now, do you think, what do you think about this cell injury? Immediately the cells are going to die with this cell injury? No, if there is a little cell injury which can be reversed. Cell injury happened, but it's a little, sir, not too much. Not much damage, the cell membranes are not damaged, the nucleus is not damaged, the mitochondria are not damaged much. So still there is a chance that you can take back this cell to normal, back to the homeostasis, to the normal level. So the cell injury can be of two types. What are they? First one is called as a reversible cell injury. So what exactly is this reversible cell injury? The cell is injured, sir, true, but not much damaged. Still, there is a chance that the cell will go back to its original state. Okay? It will go back to its original state, it's a normal homeostasis. But if the damage is so severe, the cell is severely damaged, so the stress is so much, it cannot adapt. There is so much of damage that's happening. Now, this is called as irreversible cell injury. Okay. Now, the cell is having only 
one way that is it have to die okay it have to die either by the process of necrosis or apoptosis okay so irreversible cell injury will lead to what that irreversible cell injury can lead to cell death how many types of cell death are there a cell can die by two ways first one is called as a necrosis and second one is called as apoptosis so now tell me normal cell sir you are stressing it when you are stressing it it will start to adapt but if it's failed to adapt if it's failing to adapt you are increasing the stress it's failing to adapt it's not adapting sir so what will happen first initially reversible cell injury will happen reversible now there is a still chance that the cell can go back to its original normal function but if there is an irreversible cell injury the amount of uh, stress that you are giving is so much that cell will go into irreversible cell injury so that the only fate of the cell is now it's a cell death by either necrosis or apoptosis so bolie mereko just tell me sir how many types of cell death are there two types of sir not cell death so how many types of cell injuries are there sir there are two types of cell injury reversible cell injury hai irreversible cell injury hai is dono mein difference kya hai we will discuss in detail in detail the basic thing which you know is uh, reversible cell injury mein the injury will be reversed irreversible cell injury mein there is no reversal the only fate is cell death cell is going to die for sure okay damn now let's begin our topic with reversible cell injury sir a reversible cell injury mein what happens kya hota sir what happens sir now look here always let's begin with this sir what is the most common cause of cell injury why a cell is getting injured reversible cell injury only sir why a cell is getting injured look here the most common cause of cell injury is hypoxia sir what is hypoxia right hypoxia means decrease oxygen oxygen is not there for the cell now what is the cause of hypoxia sir this is a stress hypoxia is a definitely a stress okay so hypoxia sir now what is the right first this is the most common cause of cell injury this is the most common cause of cell injury then what is the most common cause of hypoxia why hypoxia is happening why there is no oxygen availability for the cell the most common cause of hypoxia is ischemia e kya hai what is this ischemia sir so ischemia means decrease in blood supply okay so decrease in blood supply the blood vessel might be occluded because of a thrombus the blood vessel is occluded because of thrombus or atherosclerosis or because of some reason so there is ischemia that ischemia is leading to hypoxia sir now see whenever there is a hypoxia inside a cell sir cell may hypoxia hone to okay whenever there is a hypoxia in the cell sir which organelle is going to be most commonly affected okay which common which organelle is going to be most commonly affected first the mitochondria will be affected sir why because mitochondria loves oxygen by taking the oxygen it causes you know it, you know oxidative phosphorylation atp production you know it right so first organelle that will be affected is mitochondria is going to be affected sir mitochondrial dysfunction now whenever there is no oxygen mitochondria is not functioning properly sir whenever the mitochondrial dysfunction happen do you think atp will be produced no sir atp production decreases so oxidative phosphorylation will be affected okay the process of oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain it will be affected sir so atp production decreases atp decreased so the cell the cell currency sir atp now it's not there so what you have what you have done you have given the stress sir now you are giving the stress stress in the form of hypoxia hypoxia is going to cause the mitochondrial dysfunction this is the first cellular change a okay, first change in cell injury so what is the first change in the cell injury the first change that happen in the cell injury is mitochondrial dysfunction that's the mcq okay sir atp decreased atp not there so what happens see on each and every cell you know one thing okay let me show here sir actually on all our body cells there is a universal pump present what is that pump can you tell me come on travel expert divya reddy can you tell me 
what is this pump which is bringing two potassium into the cell it is taking out three sodium out of the cell do you know what is this pump it is throwing three sodium out of the cell and bringing two potassium into the cell always by using the atp okay by using the atp sir what is the name of this pump this is called as sodium is yes, still expect you are true this is sodium potassium atp is see sodium potassium atp is requires atp for the movement of sodium out of the cell and to bring the potassium into the cell now meriko just just tell me sir meriko batao ek bar sir when the atp is not there okay now the cell is not having the atp sir now do you think this pump will function the sodium potassium atp is, is which has present not all our cells now this cell also this cell which is getting injured so the sodium potassium atp is, is not going to function when the sodium potassium atp is, is not functioning not functioning what will happen which ions will start to accumulate inside the cell sir see dekho sodium ions are getting accumulated inside the cell okay so there is accumulation of the sodium ions now tell me sir wherever there is sodium water follows wherever there are uh, wherever there is sodium sir water follows you know the basic thing now atp is not there when atp is not there this for pumps this pumps are going to fail when the pumps are failed this ionic balance is affected the sodium is going to get accumulate inside the cell wherever there is sodium this sodium will try to drag the water so more water will come into the cell sir more water okay now water is coming into the cell okay there dekho the same thing whatever we have discussed the same thing is everything okay yeah the same thing i have shown here see decrease in the atp okay atp is decreased so the sodium potassium atp ases are getting affected sir sodium potassium atp ases and the sodium potassium atp ases are affected dekho what happened increase in flux of water i have explained you why more water is coming because of the accumulation of the sodium ion sodium ions are more inside the cell accumulation of the water now tell me sir now more water is coming into the cell so can i call this as a hydropic change cellular swelling right hydropic change sir okay so this is the first morphological visible change in reversible cell injury okay so cellular swelling cells are getting swelled with the water now they are getting little obese sir obese water is coming into them now they are little swell swollen okay so this is called as right hydropic swelling okay hydropic swelling now right what is mcq for your exams especially for all the board exams any exams sir the first morphological change the first morphological change that is visible now if they ask you what is the first change in cell injury the first change in cell injury is mitochondrial dysfunction then what is the first morphological change that you can see under the microscope it is a cellular swelling or hydropic change hydropic change sir water accumulation dekho when more one more water is coming into the cell now by getting like you know by just dissolve like you know by uh, when more water comes into the cell this water because of this excessive water the cell organelles will start to swell sir so endoplasmic reticulum is also going to swell okay there is swelling of endoplasmic reticulum not only endoplasmic reticulum all these organelles will start to swell okay so this is seen in uh, reversible cell injury hydropic change hai swelling a uh, cellular swelling is happening endoplasmic reticulum swelling is happening now a kya hai loss of microvilli mcq loss of microvilli sir what is this normally ek bar idhar dekho just look at here sir imagine normally this is one cell okay now the cell is having this microvilli so microvilli are there now tell me when more water is coming into the cell in order to accommodate this water the more water is coming right in order to accommodate the water now cell is swelling now when the cell is swelling what happened to this villi the villi get now flattened okay now the cell will become something like this the villi has lost sir because more water came into the cell so the loss of microvilli will be seen okay so loss of microvilli is seen in reversible cell injury true and a kya hai what are these sir blebs these are the cytoplasmic blebs sir now more water is coming into the cell now cell what is trying to do cell doesn't like this cell is still trying to control it want to it want to live sir it want to live but more and more water is coming into it 
you know what it will do see now the cell in order to accommodate this extra water okay in order to accommodate this extra water cell they go now this is the cell sir it is forming the same cell it is forming some small small protrusions okay so these are the blebs okay the cytoplasmic uh, the, the cytoplasm is getting the volume of the cytoplasm is getting expanded because of the ex excessive water so the cytoplasm sorry not the cytoplasm this uh, cell membrane now the cell membrane is forming this little blebs to accommodate the extra water so these are the cytoplasmic blebs okay bolie merko so cytoplasmic blebs are seen one thing there is a loss of microvilli second thing second thing endoplasmic reticulum is going to be swollen the cell is also getting swollen so all this are because of what why is are all these problems because of the failure of sodium potassium atpases why so sodium potassium atpases are failed because of decrease in atp why decrease in atp mitochondrial dysfunction why mitochondrial dysfunction because of hypoxia why hypoxia ischemia okay so just i am trying to repeat as this is our first class so most of you guys are from your first year second year okay so you should be able to understand this okay i am just repeating it so cytoplasmic blebs are also going to form extra pouches small 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 pouches to accommodate the water okay and myelin figures so what are these myelin figures okay, myelin figures what are what exactly are they sir this just look at it this is the image based question which can be come in your exams okay so this is a electron microscopic image okay what uh, this myelin figures especially can be seen this is a feature of electron microscopic it's an electron microscopic feature not just the light microscopic feature look are you able to appreciate this lamellated appearance these are like a laminated laminated appearance sir. okay so this structure is concentric walls or lamellations which you can see in the cytoplasm so these figures are called as a myelin figures so what exactly are they what they are made up of listen the cell is getting water more and more water is going into the cell the cell is getting swollen small swollen swollen even the cell organelles are getting swollen sir now tell me one thing cell is made up of the cell is covered by what cell membrane which is made up of phospholipids lipids which are hydrophobic okay and even your cellular organelles like endoplasmic reticulum mitochondria golgi complex even they are also surrounded by the membranes right even organelles are also surrounded by their own membranes now whenever the too much water is coming this water is distending the organelles making them swollen so during this process during this process some amount of cell membrane damage will occur some amount of cell membrane damage will occur not severe just some amount of cell membrane damage okay the cellular organelles also they go endoplasmic reticulum also it is getting swollen 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 so their cell membrane whatever is there okay their membrane the organelles which are covered by their membrane even the membrane is getting distended membrane distend 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 and there will be a small damage so some phospholipid some membrane is going to be teared away so these cell membrane this phospholipid membrane okay which is hydrophobic sir now it is going to in the cytoplasm it will come and it will go into walls or lamellations so very important point this myelin figures which are nothing but look here they are what exactly are they they are membranous walls or lamellated aggregates of phospholipids what they are made up of they are made up of phospholipids derived from where derived from damaged membranes of mitochondria or endoplasmic reticulum or cell membrane okay so this is the question that they will ask you in your exam they are made up of what they are made up of phospholipids they are mainly made up of phospholipid other components are there like calcium but they are mainly made up of phospholipids okay next so far let's recap what we have seen sir come on guys let's see we have, we have started with the reversible cell injury reversible okay we have started with the reversible cell injury now in reversible cell injury what happens there is a decrease in the atp okay there is decrease in the atp now when the atp is going down what happens sodium potassium atp has failed more water is coming into the cell so hydrophobic change that's the first morphological change endoplasmic reticulum is filling loss of microvilli are seen cytoplasmic blebs are seen and myelin figures are seen myelin figures are made up of what phospholipids next sir next what happens so whenever the atp is not there oxygen is not there sir okay oxygen nahi hai oxygen nahi hai to when oxygen is not there do you think 
aerobic respiration is going to be possible aerobic respiration needs oxygen now oxygen is not there hypoxia the patient, uh, the cell is having hypoxia so now the respiration will shift into anaerobic pathway anaerobic respiration will start to happen inside the cell so whenever anaerobic respiration occurs what happens lactic acid is going to be produced you know lactic acid is the product of anaerobic respiration now inside the cell lactic acid levels are going to increase lactic acid acidosis now what will happen because of this acidic environment see acidosis sir now what happens there is clumping of chromatin the chromatin material which is present inside the nucleus now this a nuclear chromatin they go now the nuclear chromatin it will start to clump come together clump sir okay so why this is happening this is the nuclear change what is the nuclear change mcq nuclear change nuclear change okay so what is the nuclear change that is seen in the reversible cell injury it is a clumping of chromatin okay next sir what other changes can be seen dekho now i have said you one thing the endoplasmic reticulum because of this hydrophobic change as the more and more water is coming into the cell the endoplasmic reticulum is getting swollen no the endoplasmic reticulums are getting swollen who is attached to endoplasmic reticulum i am asking you who is attached sir to endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes right ribosomes are attached now because of the swelling of the endoplasmic reticulum those ribosomes will undergo detachment the ribosomes will start to detach sir now what will happen do you think protein synthesis will happen now no protein synthesis will stop so there is decrease in the see there is ribosomal detachment leading to decrease in the protein synthesis so uh, these are the three main events that happens in the reversible cell injury okay these are the three main events that happens in the reversible cell injury what are the three main events which i want you to know are cellular swelling second thing is clumping of the chromatin and third one is decrease in the protein synthesis sir okay is it clear guys so far is it clear come on guys is it clear trial expert seems that you are so active reversible cell injury all this is reversible cell injury right now we are all discussing about the reversible cell injury this a reversible cell injury can happen in any any cell it can happen in any cell when you are giving stress to a cell first it will undergo reversible cell injury see now try to understand like this okay try to understand like this any of your body cell if you stop oxygen to it you don't give oxygen to it first what will happen the sodium potassium atps will they will stop functioning so cellular swelling will happen clumping of chromatin will happen decrease protein synthesis will happen myelin figures are seen but still if you just leave the cell if you take out the stress from the cell okay just remove the stress from the cell still the cell will go back to its normal function sir the, the cell will survive okay there is no cellular death till here this is a reversible cell injury still the cell can uh, if you remove the stress the still the cell can go back to its normal function okay then let's begin the topic of irreversible cell injury sir एक क्या है वॉट इज रिवर इन रिवर्सिबल सेल इंजुरी ओके नाउ देखो वेन कैन वी से सेल्स आर इन रिवर्सिबली डैमेज सर बियॉन्ड रिपेयर नाउ देर इज नो रिपेयर सर बियॉन्ड रिपेयर द सेल इज डैमेज सर नो यू नो वॉट इज दैट वन थिंग देर इज सीवियर मेम्ब्रेन डैमेज इन द सेल मेम्ब्रेन द सेल मेम्ब्रेन ऑफ द सेल इट इज सीवियरली डैमेज द सेल कैन नो लॉन्गर अंडर गो रिपेयर सर यू कैन नॉट रिपेयर द सेल okay now it is no longer reversible cell injury now it is irreversible cell injury okay so what is that thing which differentiate reversible cell injury for irreversible cell injury it's a severe membrane damage okay so now let's see here imagine this is one cell where the membrane of this cell is damaged sir in many places see for example in this place the membrane is damaged in this place also the membrane is damaged sir. cell membrane is damaged okay now where the cell membrane is damaged just tell me sir from outside calcium whatever the calcium is there okay calcium levels inside the cell is very very less sir this is also the fmg question the question which was asked in the recent fmg exam question is which ion concentration is maintained less in the cell when compared to the other ions the calcium concentration the calcium concentration inside the cell is very less 
inside the cell it is less outside the cell it is more sir outside the cell it is more so now tell me when the cell is damaged the cellular membrane when the membrane is damaged now this calcium will start to come into the cell now i hope you already know from your first year of mbbs sir calcium what exactly is this the calcium calcium is enzyme activator okay calcium is the enzyme activator it activates all the enzymes sir multiple enzymes okay now let's see what happens so there is severe membrane damage so that there is increase in the calcium influx into the cell from outside the calcium is going to come into the cells okay now what this calcium will do see calcium is going to activate certain enzymes which enzymes sir phospholipases now it is decided cell membrane is damaged there is no chance of repair now the cell have to undergo death for sure irreversible no so cell have to die sir so if the cell have to die the you have to break the cell membrane you have to break the nucleus you have to break the proteins inside the cell okay so this calcium it activates inside the cell the calcium activates the phospholipases the phospholipases are going to be activated okay now what happens now dekho that the phospholipases they will break the cell membrane and break the mitochondrial membrane the cell membranes mitochondrial membranes they will be broken down and one more thing i want you to know is see this phospholipases in the name itself it is phospholipase phos they will break the phospholipids where phospholipids are there phospholipids are there in the membranes membrane cell membrane mitochondrial membrane you know it right so now the cell membrane is getting damaged the mitochondrial membrane is also getting damaged the membrane around the mitochondria is also getting damaged sir now this is also very important once the mitochondrial is damaged this is also an indication If the mitochondria are damaged that's also an indication that it is irreversible cell injury sir so what are the two things which will say this is irreversible cell injury that is severe membrane damage cell membrane damage as well as mitochondrial damage so if there are present inside the cell it is no longer reversible cell injury it is now irreversible cell injury okay now mcqs which were asked in your exam calcium came into the cell sir calcium is activating what calcium is activating the phospholipases the cell membranes are getting damaged mitochondrial membranes are getting damaged now they go what happens do you know calcium now will enter into the mitochondria calcium where it is going calcium is going into the mitochondria sir okay so now this calcium which is going into the mitochondria it is called as large flocculent densities okay so this is the question they go now imagine this is your mitochondria now mitochondrial membrane is damaged no now in some places they go in some places mitochondrial membrane is also damaged sir now this is your mitochondria right now see here now calcium it will go into the cell and it will start to deposit in the mitochondria now this green color thing imagine it as a calcium okay so these are the calcium deposits okay so this calcium deposits are called as large amorphous flocculent densities okay large amorphous flocculent densities are seen in which organel can you tell me large amorphous flocculent densities are seen in mitochondria so what exactly are this large amorphous flocculent densities what exactly are they they are nothing but calcium deposition in mitochondria mcq okay next mcq the large flocculent densities which are there in the mitochondria that are the hallmark of what sir hallmark of ac konch better okay large amorphous large amorphous flocculent densities that are the hallmark jaldi hmm okay so they are the hallmark of irreversible cell injury okay so they are the hallmark of irreversible cell injury sir so now let's just see the mcqs okay what are the mcqs which i want you to know is sir calcium is coming into the cell now where this calcium is going sir the calcium is going inside the mitochondria and the calcium is getting deposited in the mitochondria 
So this calcium is called as a large flocculent amorphous densities, which are the hallmark of irreversible cell injury. Irreversible cell injury. Okay. Next. So the calcium, whatever it is coming in. Calcium is coming in, right? So this calcium not only activating the phospholipases, which breaks the cell membrane, it will also activate the proteases. In the cell, all the proteins will be broken down. So the cytoskeletal proteins, okay, the cytoskeletal proteins, they will be broken down. So again, causing damage to the cell, okay? So cell membranes are getting damaged. The proteins in the cells are getting damaged. And the last one, the calcium, sir, it will start to activate the nucleases inside the cell, okay? Phospholipases are activated. Proteases are activated and the nucleases are activated. Once the nucleases are activated, what they will do? Nuclease, breakdown of the nucleus. The nucleus will be broken down, sir. Okay. So, the nuclear DNA, it is going to be damaged. The nuclear damage is going to be broken down. Once look at here, guys. Now, here I am showing you the normal cell. This is the normal cell with the normal chromatin and the nucleus. Nucleus and the nuclear chromatin. But, once the cell decided, it is decided, irreversible cell injury. Now, the cell is undergoing death, sir. Okay, now do you know what happens? The nucleus, all this nucleus will shrink in size, become condensed. This is condensation of the nucleus is called as pycnosis. Okay, so the condensation of the nucleus is called as pycnosis. After condensation, look at the nucleus, what is happening? What is happening to the nucleus? The nucleus is getting broken down into small, small pieces. This is called as karyorexis. Okay, Car pycnosis means condensation. Condensation. Karyorexis means fragmentation. Fragmentation. And the last one, karyolysis. Karyolysis, sir. Karyolysis means what? Lysis. Dissolved. Dissolution. Okay. Dissolution. So, what are the nuclear changes? This is the question, sir. They will ask you in an order. What are the nuclear changes that are seen in irreversible cell injury? If the cell is undergoing irreversible damage, once it is decided, irreversible cell injury lead to death. Now, what kind of nuclear changes are seen? Pycnosis, karyorexis, karyolysis. Order is important. Condensation, condensation, fragmentation, dissolution. Okay, these are the nuclear changes. Okay, so this is... Uh, what I want you to know, the so, reversible cell injury completed, sir, irreversible cell injury is also completed. In reversible cell injury, may simple important points, failure of the sodium potassium ATPases, cellular swelling, hydropic change, myelin figures are seen, endoplasmic reticulum swell, uh, swelling is going to be seen, cytoplasmic blebs are going to be seen, microvilli loss is going to be seen. Okay, these are some important points which I want you to know. And what are the nuclear changes that you will see here? In reversible cell injury, sir, in reversible cell injury, what is the nuclear change that is seen? The nuclear change is Clumping of chromatin, clumping of chromatin. Okay. Now, here I want to add one MCQ point. So, these myelin figures are there, right? So, these myelin figures, are they going to be seen in reversible or irreversible? They are seen in both, sir. So, these myelin figures, they are seen in both reversible and irreversible. They are seen both in reversible as well as irreversible cell injury. Okay, myelin figures are seen both in reversible as well as irreversible cell injury. What is the nuclear change that is seen? Clumping of chromatin. Now, in irreversible cell injury, what are the points which I want you to know? What are the two things that decide that cell is irreversibly damaged? One is cell membrane damage and mitochondrial damage. Presence of large flocculent mitochondrial densities is the hallmark of irreversible cell injury and that's because of the calcium deposition is in the mitochondria. Okay, and what are the nuclear events that are seen? This is important. Nuclear events are condensation of nucleus, pycnosis, followed by karyorexis and karyolysis. So, with this, irreversible cell injury is also completed. Reversible cell injury hai, irreversible cell injury hai. After irreversible cell injury, what happens? Cell will die. Cell will die, sir. Okay, now that I will discuss. So, is that clear so far? Guys, is that clear so far? Travel expert, you are asking about what? Uh, sir, in MCQ, what we will choose? Clumping of chromatin? No, no. Clumping of chromatin is seen in reversible, reversible and that's it. Just remember that. Clumping of chromatin is seen in reversible cell injury. Okay? That's a nuclear change. In irreversible cell injury, what are the nuclear changes? I have said to you. Pycnosis, karyorexis, karyolysis. Okay?
ओके नेक्स्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द नेक्रोसिस सेल डेथ सेल डेड सर सेल डेड How many types of cells do you have? There are multiple organs are there, multiple tissues are there in our body. There are different different tissues are there, different different simple. Try to understand like this. Different different tissues, different different cells. So different different cells will undergo different types of cell death, sir. Okay, actually there are two types of cell death. One is necrosis and apoptosis. First we will discuss about the necrosis. See necrosis. First point, always pathological, sir. Always pathological. Cell doesn't want to die. Cell always want to live. Now in this condition, cell want to live. But some stress from outside, stress that is reversible cell injury, irreversible cell injury. Now it is causing the death of the cell. So necrosis is always, always pathological. It's always pathological. Okay, it's always pathological. Necrosis is it active or passive? So it is a passive process, sir. What does I mean by passive? Sir, during this process, the cell is dying, no. No ATP is involved. There is no ATP, no program, nothing. Because of some external stress, it is killing the cell, sir. Okay. I used to remember uh, necrosis more like a murder. Okay. The cell doesn't want to die, but some stress from outside is actually killing the cell. Okay. Different types of tissues will undergo different types of necrosis, sir. So what you should know for your exam, the most common type of necrosis is coagulative necrosis. Most of our body tissues will undergo coagulative form of necrosis. What is this sir, coagulative necrosis? Cell dead, okay, cell is dead sir. But if you put under the microscope, still you can identify the cell architecture. Ah sir, this is a cardiac myocyte. Ah, this is a nephron sir, this is a renal tubule. Still the architecture, cell is dead. But still the architecture is preserved, okay. So this is called as coagulative necrosis, which is the most common type. Guys, once look at here. Here I am showing you the kidney. This is the kidney. Now, because of the occlusion of the artery, because of the occlusion of the artery, see there is wedge-shaped necrosis. So this part of the kidney have undergone necrosis, coagulative necrosis. Okay. So now one by one, one by one, coagulative necrosis. This is the image-based question, which was. Many times tested in the exam, many times tested in the exam, sir. So, in coagulative necrosis, first tell me, what happened to the tissue architecture? What happens? Preserved. So, still you can say, ah, sir, this is cardiac myocyte, or this is, uh, like, this is a hepatocyte, or this is a renal tubule. You can still identify the structure, even after the death of the cell. So, this type of cell death is called as coagulative necrosis, okay? Now, it is seen in, sir, it is seen in heart. Myocardial infarction is an example of what? Myocardial infarction is an example of coagulative necrosis. The tissue dead, but still structure is preserved. The cell structure, architecture, the boundaries, outline, it is still preserved. Okay. So, under the microscope, you can identify it. Okay. Heart and kidneys, spleen and most of the solid organs. Okay. Most of the solid organs. So because of infarction, this is the word they will use you most of the time, infarction. So because of the infarction, what exactly is infarction? You have uh, cut down the blood supply, that tissue is dead, infarcted, infarcted area. Okay, so now you can say that this is the infarcted area, you have cut down the blood supply, that area is dead. So that's an example of coagulative necrosis. Now, it is due to what? That in coagulative necrosis, still you are saying, I am saying you, that still architecture is preserved. Why architecture is preserved? Because of a process called as denaturation of proteins. Denaturation of proteins. Okay. So, the proteins will undergo denaturation and because of this process, because of the denaturation of the process, because of this process, denaturation, still the architecture is preserved, sir. Okay. Next, sir, what are these ghost cells? This is also MCQ which was asked from this area. Ghost cells are seen in 
Now tell me, this is a normal healthy cell, sir, with the nucleus in the center. Normal healthy cells with the nucleus in the center. Okay. Now, when the cell is undergoing death, cell is dying, sir. Now, inside the cell, okay, cell is dead, already dead. Inside the cell, can you see the nucleus? The nucleus is not there. So now, there is an empty cell. So these empty cells without the nucleus, still the architecture is preserved, the outlines, boundaries is there. But inside the cell, there is nothing, deserted, no one is there. Nothing is inhabited. So we use the word deserted cities, right? Deserted, ghost towns. Okay, ghost towns. Ghost towns means what? No one is inhabiting over there. Nothing is there. Okay, just empty houses. So in the same way, now in these cells, Nothing is there. Empty cells. Okay. So, these cells are called as ghost cells. So, ghost cells are seen in which type of necrosis? They are seen in coagulative necrosis. Okay. And coagulation, uh, denaturation of proteins or coagulation of proteins will be seen. Coagulation of proteins will cause the preservation of the architecture. Denaturation or the coagulation of the proteins will cause the coagulative necrosis. Completed, sir. Now, image-based question, which was tested in FMG exams and PG exams, Indian exams, this question was asked and even in the MLE exams, board exams also, these questions will come. Now, what is this, which I am showing you right now? What is this, sir? Come on, guys, tell me. This is your brain. Now, see, this area of the brain is getting infarcted. Gone. Okay, I shouldn't say. But anyway, this area of the brain is getting damaged. Dead, sir. Now, if you take small tissue from here, just take a small tissue from here, put it under the microscope and look at it. You cannot say anything. The tissue architecture, you cannot say that this is a neuron. The tissue architecture is not preserved, sir. Okay. So, the entire, in that area, there is liquefactive necrosis happening. Totally, it is getting dissolved. Liquefication. Okay. So, now, these tissues, okay, these type of tissues will undergo liquefactive necrosis. So, which tissues? So, first write the seen in brain. Okay, brain and also pancreas. Sir, brain and pancreas. So, these tissues, what is something special about them? So, the brain and pancreas, they have lots of enzymes. Okay, lots of enzymes due to presence of hydro lytic enzymes okay so when the cells are undergoing death due to the presence of high amount of hydrolytic enzymes within them these enzymes will start to totally dissolve the cell architecture sir so what happened to the tissue architecture the tissue architecture is not preserved okay, the tissue architecture is not going to be preserved sir and the image based question very important okay now after that Look at this. This is your lung tissue. Actually, this is your lung tissue. Now, in this lung tissue, there is this area. Deco. So, this area, how it is looking like? It's looking like a cottage cheese. It's looking like a cheesy appearance. Cheesy appearance. Waxy, cheesy appearance. Sir. So, this lung tissue is undergoing necrosis. Okay. And because of this necrosis, just morphologically, not under the microscope, just by look, morphology itself, Gross morphology itself is showing you cottage cheese like appearance. So that's it. it's called as caseous necrosis. Caseous means cheese like. Okay. So MCQs which were asked are the caseous necrosis is actually a combo. It's a combo, sir. It's a combination of both coagulative. It's an example of both coagulative. Plus liquefactive. Spen is little misbehaving. But okay, no issue. It's an example of both coagulative and liquefactive necrosis. Okay, coagulative and liquefactive necrosis. Sir. So it's both combo. Both are happening. Okay. Now appearance. How it is appearing? So this tissue is dead, and how it is appearing? Like you know, grossly. Cottage cheese like. Cheese like. Okay, cheese like appearance. It is associated with which condition? Especially this type of necrosis will be associated with infections. Okay, infections like TB mainly. Sir, TB because of the mycobacterium, uh, tuberculosis, organism, and it is also because of some fungal infections. Fungal infections like histoplasmosis. 
anyone anyone travel expert it's seen in thank you engisan india so you teachers is very nice thank you very much so this is the first class sir we'll go we'll gradually in 30 classes let's complete the entire pathology what is needed for you okay i'm just teaching especially keeping exams in mind what they will ask you in your exam okay so a tb me is condition me tb histoplasmosis and coccidioidomycosis one more condition one more condition so tb histoplasmosis coccidioidomycosis okay coccidioidomycosis i am not writing it uh, it's a lengthy name so tb histoplasmosis coccidioidomycosis in these conditions if you have this infections in your lung yeah lung parenchyma is dying lung is dying no doubt but after death it will look like a cheese so caseous necrosis okay now fat necrosis sir what is this fat necrosis now wherever there is fat in your body fat hai na in some places there is fat sir if this fat is undergoing necrosis that is called as fat necrosis fat death sir adipocyte death the death of the adipocytes now some important exam important points are there dekho see this fat necrosis first where it is seen sir where more fat is there in your body the fat is mainly present in your breast in females breast tissue mein fat hai zyada fat hai and omentum omentum mein fat hai and buttocks okay buttocks mein okay so in these areas very much fat is there very very high amount of fat is there now imagine there is a trauma trauma to the breast okay some road traffic accident because of some uh, abuse or because of some like you know injury like you know fall now there is a damage that is happening to the breast sir breast tissue damage is happening now the breast inside the breast the adipocytes whatever were there now they are undergoing death okay now they are undergoing death sir necrosis is going to happen now this necrosis is called as a fat necrosis important points are once the fat is dead okay the adipocytes are dead now the fatty acids are going to be released okay fatty acids are going to be released sir this fatty acids love to bind with the calcium okay this fatty acids love to bind with the calcium okay so fatty acids are binding are binding with the calcium sir ah okay now what is this process called as this process is called as saponification so calcium binding with the fatty acids now you will start to see in the area of necrosis in that particular area of necrosis you will start to see white 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 de deposits so this is called as chalky white appearance okay chalky white appearance so chalky white appearance is in which type of necrosis fat necrosis sir now dekho ek bar idhar just look at here sir so can you tell me what is that organ come on buddies guys can you tell me what is this organ engisan all the best for your nitpj exam hope you will clear your exam with flying colors So this organ, this is a pancreas. Okay, a pancreas. Sir. It's a pancreas, sir. Now you know, you already know. So pancreas will undergo which type of necrosis? Pancreas will undergo pancreas will undergo liquefactive necrosis because of enzyme rich. Pancreas have lots and lots of enzymes. Okay, pancreas have pancreatic lipase, colipase, uh, trypsinogen, chemotrypsinogen, procarboxylipase. So many, so many enzymes are there inside the pancreas. So pancreatic parenchyma. will undergo liquefactive necrosis no doubt but now i am talking about the peripancreatic fat okay around the pancreas also fat is there now this is the fat i am talking about ek bar dekho now in this condition sir are you able to look the peripancreatic fat is undergoing necrosis and whenever fat necrosis happens their calcium will start to deposit their calcium is starting to deposit so this process is called as saponification Okay, this process is called as what? Saponification, sir. So, giving you which kind of appearance? Chalky white appearance. Okay. Now, the questions will be something like this. This kind of questions will come in your exam. Acute pancreatitis. The patient is having acute pancreatitis. So, what kind of necrosis will happen in the pancreas inside the pancreatic parenchyma? Pancreatic parenchyma will undergo liquefactive necrosis, but the peripancreatic fat will undergo fat necrosis, giving you chalky white appearance. Okay. Next, sir. especially uh, this is very much important for your neat pg exams also look 
Fibrinoid necrosis. Fibrinoid means fibrin deposition. Necrosis is happening. Ne, there in the area of necrosis, you will see pink color fibrin like material. Pink color glossy material is going to be seen. Now, where it is seen? In which conditions you will see fibrinoid necrosis? What are the examples? Okay. Examples seen in vasculitis, sir. Okay. Especially autoimmune, uh, like you know, immune mediated, uh, so not autoimmune, immune mediated vasculitis. Uh, like polyarthritis nodosa. So, the polyarthritis nodosa, nodosa, sir, it's an example of what? What happens in polyarthritis nodosa? Polyarthritis nodosa condition may, there will be necrotizing vasculitis. The vessels are undergoing necrosis. Vessels are dying because of immune-mediated damage. Now, if you look at the vessel, this is absolutely a bed vessel, sir. How can you say this is the lumen where blood, blood cells are seen? Now, this is the wall of the blood vessel which is undergoing necrosis, but look here in the wall. There is a pink color fibrin like material present. So, this type of necrosis where pink color material is getting deposited, this is called as fibrinoid necrosis. Okay. So, fibrinoid necrosis is seen in polyarthritis nodosa. And not only that, one more heart condition, sir, which is called as rheumatic heart disease. In rheumatic heart disease, again in the heart, there is some areas will undergo necrosis, which are called as ash of bodies. Ash of bodies. Okay, the ash of bodies, which are pathognomic, they are pathognomic of rheumatic heart disease in cardiovascular system. Again, I will teach you there. But for now, just trust me. Sir, in a condition called as rheumatic heart disease, you will see ash of bodies. This ash of bodies are example of what? This ash of bodies are again example of the fibrinoid necrosis, sir. Okay, so with this, the important types of necrosis are completed. Just you look what are the important types of necrosis? Coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, coagulative necrosis in all the solid organs like heart, uh, kidneys, spleen, all solid, uh, solid organs. Next, liquefactive necrosis in those organs where enzymes are more present like brain and pancreas. Next, caseous necrosis in infections, fungal infections and TB infections in the lung with a cheesy material development. Next, fat necrosis. In the breast, for example, the question will be something like, there is this one female, she is driving the car, now she met with a road traffic accident. Now, because during this road traffic accident, now she had a trauma to her breast, that steering wheel, the steering wheel, now her breast is getting compressed against the steering wheel. Now, which type of necrosis will happen in her breast? Fat necrosis will happen. Okay, which process will happen? Saponification will happen. Calcium will allow to go into a deposit in that fatty acid area. Wherever the fatty acids are there, now the calcium will start to deposit in that area. Okay, and fibrinoid necrosis seen in the vessels, vasculitis condition. Done. Now, after this, some important types of necrosis are there. Important types, some little special. See, they go either. So, what is this? Diabetic patients, you know, diabetic patients, especially they will be having the gangrene, sir, gangrene. So, this is the dry gangrene. Okay, dry gangrene, where you can see a very clear demarcation. This is the word which is important, sir. Okay, so this area is dead which is looking like a mummy, mummified, totally dry area, totally mummified. There is no bacteria growing in that area. Okay. So, what exactly is happening? Dry gangrene is what, sir? Are a dry gangrene is nothing but coagulative necrosis. It's a type of coagulative necrosis. Okay. In that area, what happened? Coagulative necrosis happened. Okay. Now, you cut down the blood supply to that area. Slowly, gradually, gradually, you have cut down the blood supply to that area. So, that area is dead. Coagulative necrosis. Okay. So, just look here. Important MCQs which you need to know for your exams. Concentrate. There are two types of gangrene. Dry gangrene, wet gangrene. Okay. So, dry gangrene is most commonly seen in. So, dry gangrene is going to be seen in the limbs, upper limbs and lower limbs. But wet gangrene, it is seen more in the bowel, sir, intestines. Okay. Mainly seen in the intestines. Okay. It doesn't mean it is seen in the other extremities. Yes, it's, it can also be seen even in the limbs also, but mainly it is seen in the limb, it is mainly it's seen in the bubbles. Wet gangrene is seen in the bubbles. Dry gangrene is seen in the limbs. Now, why? Why wet gangrene? Why dry gangrene? Sir, dry gangrene is because of the main arterial occlusion. The artery supplying this area that's blocked. When the arterial occlusion happens, no blood flow, hypo ischemia, hypoxia, stress, reversible cell injury, irreversible cell injury, gone. Coagulative necrosis. Okay. So, Due to the arterial occlusion, dry gangrene will occur. This wet gangrene is more of venous blockage. Okay, more commonly venous occlusion. The veins are occluded. Okay, the venous drainage is blocked. When the venous drainage is blocked, congestion will happen. 
no new blood is coming to that area no new blood is coming to that area venous congestion is there so tissues will die tissues will die okay but in your exam for exam point of view sir i don't want to remember all these things tell me something which will come in your exam it is image based question see when you see a clear demarcated line and if it's looking like a mummified appearance a dry mummified appearance that's a dry gangrene it's an example of what it's an example of coagulative necrosis okay necrosis coagulative necrosis sir look here so this is more it's not looking dry sir it's not looking dry it's not looking mummified but here also tissues are dying tissue death is happening but it's more like liquidy okay here most of the time infections will start sir here infections will start okay so this is more of liquefactive necrosis okay so wet, wet gangrene is an example of which type of necrosis a liquefactive necrosis along with the infections usually infections will develop here okay in dry gangrene usually infections are not developed okay there is no growth of bacteria that i will show you ek baar idhar dekho look sir here now see the line of demarcation in dry gangrene present okay so the line of demarcation means healthy tissue dead tissue present at the junction between healthy and gangrenous part but in wet gangrene in wet gangrene cases that line of demarcation is not clear okay line of demarcation is a mcq line of demarcation is seen in dry gangrene it is not seen in the wet gangrene next bacteria i have said you where bacteria will grow sir in dry gangrene bacteria will not grow bacteria fail to survive in wet gangrene area may liquefactive necrosis along with infection superimposed infection will cause the liquefactive necrosis okay so these are the some questions which i want you to know for your exam dry gangrene wet gangrene dry gangrene is coagulative necrosis wet gangrene is liquefactive necrosis dry gangrene may line of demarcation is seen wet gangrene may line of demarcation is not seen okay dry gangrene is because of the arterial occlusion wet gangrene is because of the venous occlusion next after this the next question that we we'll ask that will come in your exam is zenker's degeneration a kya hai sir what is this zenker degeneration or zenker's necrosis so this zenker's degeneration is also called as hyaline necrosis hyaline necrosis sir where this necrosis is happening necrosis of skeletal muscles okay so very important especially for the neat pg exam see so, severe glassy glassy looking like glassy shining glassy or waxy hyaline degeneration they are the same things waxy they will use the word waxy degeneration that is happening in the skeletal muscles what exactly is it zenker's degeneration skeletal muscles are dying undergoing necrosis death why see necrosis of skeletal muscles in which condition in acute infectious conditions in acute infectious conditions because of the production of the toxins these toxins are going to give the stress to the muscles and the muscles are going to die okay so skeletal muscles are going to die so this type of skeletal muscle death is called as zenker's degeneration okay so this zenker's degeneration it's which type of necrosis skeletal muscle is dying which type of necrosis again coagulative okay coagulative necrosis okay coagulative necrosis sir see one thing sir whenever you see the word coagulative necrosis imagine my skeletal muscles my skeletal muscles are undergoing necrosis now i am saying it's an example of coagulative necrosis which means if you take a tissue and if you put it under the microscope and if you look at it the tissue architecture is preserved okay tissue architecture is preserved so it's seen in which type of infection this zenker's degeneration seen in which type of infection especially typhoid seen in typhoid and not only in typhoid it's also seen in hepatitis also but typhoid sir typhoid is also called as enteric fever because of which organism salmonella typhi okay so which skeletal muscles are going to most commonly undergo this zenker's degeneration which skeletal muscles so skeletal muscles here are rectus abdominis rectus abdominis sir okay so rectus abdominis what exactly is this muscle rectus abdominis rectus abdominis is the six pack muscle that muscle okay we will undergo degeneration so with this all important types of necrosis are completed okay reversible cell injury irreversible cell injury after that cell death we have started in cell death i have also done the necrosis and different types of necrosis is that clear is that clear travel expert arun fun mode shri raj is that clear
okay okay guys now after this let's continue with the apoptosis very simple topic we will complete this in next 15 minutes let's try to complete the apoptosis sir first you tell me you just name me sir apoptosis apoptosis is it physiological or pathological tell me necrosis is always always pathological every time necrosis is pathological sir cell doesn't want to die but someone from outside is killing the cell okay apoptosis is sometimes physiological and sometimes pathological sir both it's both physiological as well as pathological sometimes the cell have to die our body cells have to die sometimes i will explain you so it's both physiological as well as pathological so this is a programmed cell death okay everything is properly planned it's not like necrosis it's not like murder it's like a suicide sir okay everything is properly planned by using atp we are killing the cells so it's a programmed cell death is called as apoptosis and one thing i want you to know is sir after necrosis the cells are dying the cell membranes are ruptured and the cellular contents are leaking out after necrosis one thing very important point is after necrosis cell damage will leak the contents will leak the cellular contents outside so that inflammation will start after necrosis there will be inflammation but here after apoptosis there is no inflammation i will explain you later why why there is no inflammation why because cellular contents the cell membrane is not damaged okay cell membrane is not damaged sir the cellular contents are not leaking out so no inflammation no neutrophils will come no uh, recruitment of the neutrophils nothing will happen so no inflammation it's a programmed cell death by using atp okay we are making everything by using atp sir everything is programmed because we are using atp okay atp is used in this process and this apoptosis it is caspase dependent so caspases are the enzymes there are certain enzymes involved in this process of cell death okay what are those enzymes caspases so caspases will kill the cell okay so what are some important points about the apoptosis physiological and pathological okay it's a programmed cell death there is no inflammation okay no inflammation after the cell death and it's an active process and it's a caspase dependent some caspases enzymes are involved in killing the cell just look it here this is something which i find in the internet it's very simple very interesting also see necrosis versus apoptosis necrosis always pathological apoptosis is maybe physiological maybe pathological most of the time in necrosis okay most of the time in necrosis sir many cells will die a group of cells because of the stress not one single cell a group of tissue because of arterial occlusion that wedge shaped area you have seen a little extra tissue more tissue is getting dead okay so affects many number of cells adjacent cells surrounding cells will also be affected but this is apoptosis apoptosis is like suicide during suicide you will die or and others are also going to die no only one person one person is committing the suicide so affects very less number of cells single cells usually single single cells okay now during necrosis the cell size increases the cell size actually increases sir cellular swelling will happen okay water is coming into the cell reversible cell injury first initially cellular size is going to be increased and burst away okay and in nec apoptosis further later in next 15 minutes i will tell you cell size actually becomes small with the time cell size is getting smaller and smaller the cell size is getting shrunken okay now it's a necrosis is a passive process no use of any atp apoptosis is active a for a apoptosis is active after necrosis there is inflammation seen mcq after necrosis there is no inflammatory reaction i have said you after necrosis cell membrane is damaged during necrosis cell membrane is damaged the cellular contents will leak out leading to inflammatory trigger inflammatory reaction in necrosis the cell membranes are intact cell membranes are not damaged cellular contents are not leaking out so no inflammation okay now yeah this is the last one see dekho see in necrosis i have said you plasma membrane or cell membrane is disrupted in apoptosis cell membrane is intact mcq all these are the mcq trust me for in this entire class this one single slide is the most 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 important before going to the exam one should go through this okay just normal fmg exam this will be enough this one single slide will be enough but if you are aiming for the neat pg exams like in you know, higher level of exams you need to have little more knowledge okay now sir tell me apoptosis is it physiological or pathological 
I said you, apoptosis is both physiological as well as pathological. What are the physiological conditions? In which conditions? Physiologically, cells will commit suicide. In my body, some cells, they will commit suicide, sir. And it is good only. For good, for body is good. It, like, it will happen. Which conditions? See? Physiological examples of apoptosis. During embryogenesis. Okay, when you are an embryo, many, many cells in your body will undergo apoptosis. Okay, actually the classical example which they give you is your hand will be something like this. It's like a stump, sir, one single stump. Okay, now actually during embryogenesis the fingers are not there. Okay, the digits are not formed. It's like a one single stump, sir. Now, here in this area, whatever the cells were there in this area, okay, it's like a one single stump. It's like a one pad of tissue. Okay, now whatever the cells which are filling in this area, they will all undergo apoptosis. So, death of the cells in this area will create the spaces so that digits are formed. Okay, that's a classical example. Okay, so separation of digits from one another, separation of digits from one another, why? Because the cells which are present in this area, they undergo necrosis, sorry, apoptosis, not necrosis, ap ap apoptosis. Okay, so separation of digits during limb development. One example, sir. Second example, hormone dependent involution. In female, we know every month, once in a month, her endometrium, her endometrial cells will shed out. Okay, why progesterone comes down? Whenever progesterone is not there, automatically the endometrial cells will undergo involution and death. So, these, these cells, their survival, their, the cell survival depends on the progesterone. If progesterone is not there, they will commit suicide. Physiologically, this is not something pathological, this is something normal. Ah, whenever progesterone is not there, by physiology itself, by female physiology itself, the endometrial cells will undergo death and shedding will occur. So, this is again example of apoptosis. Endometrial shedding during menstruation is an example of physiological apoptosis. Okay. And deletion of autoreactive T cells. Okay. Self-reactive lymphocytes are normally in your thymus. Thymus, actually the T cells, they will, they are going, actually it's like a school set. The T cells, they will learn there. Ah, what is self-tissue? What is foreign tissue? whom to attack, whom should not be attacked. The T cells maturation will happen in the thymus. During that maturation, what will happen? They will differentiate, they will know to differentiate which is self and which is non-self, which is self and which is foreign antigen. Okay. Now, during this process, if a T lymphocyte, for example, see, there is this one T lymphocyte, it is recognizing the self, it is recognizing the self antigen as a foreign antigen. Now, is that good? A lymphocyte have to recognize a non-self antigen. Okay, it have to attack a foreign antigen. It have to attack the bacteria, not my own cells. For example, one lymphocyte, it is identifying my self antigens as foreign and it is trying to attack. Means self-reactive, these lymphocytes are attacking me only. Now what the cells should go, I have to undergo, the cells have to undergo apoptosis. We don't want these cells. So, by physiology itself, by physiology itself, these cells will undergo apoptosis. They will die. They will commit suicide. Okay. So, deletion of self-reactive T lymphocytes is an example of physiological apoptosis. Now, for example, if it is not happening, failure. Okay. You do not eliminate. You haven't eliminated the self-reactive lymphocytes. Not eliminated, sir. They are still present in our body. What they will cause? They will cause autoimmune diseases. They will cause what? Autoimmune diseases. Next, sir, physiological apoptosis examples I have given you. Embryogenesis, hormone dependent conditions like involution of the endometrium uh, when you re remove the progesterone every month, once in a month and deletion of the self-reactive lymphocytes, elimination of the self-reactive lymphocytes is also an example of physiological apoptosis. Now, favorite question in the NEET PG exam and FMG exam. Sir, council men bodies. Okay, council men bodies. What are these, sir? Council men bodies. These are nothing but dying hepatocytes. The hepatocytes which are infected with the virus. Okay. So, what are these council men bodies? They are dying hepatocytes. See. Okay. These are the hepatocytes. They are undergoing what? They are undergoing apoptosis. Why they are undergoing apoptosis? They are committing suicide. Why? Because inside them, there is a virus. HCV virus. Okay, hepatitis virus is there inside them. Now, they have decided, let's commit suicide. Why? Because the virus is there. 
if the cell is still alive, the virus will replicate and more number of copies are going to be produced. Now, this will spread to the surrounding healthy tissue also. So, now this hepatocyte have decided, let me commit suicide. So, this dying hepatocyte is called as the councilman body seen in viral hepatitis. Okay, the councilman bodies are seen in the viral hepatitis, sir. Okay, so right here seen in viral hepatitis. Seen viral hepatitis. Now, and not only this, I'm going a little fast now, not only this, just by heart. So, cell our <clears throat> tumors, if you are having a tumor, okay, there is a tumor, so there is a mass. Now, most of the tumor cells, they are not normal cells, most of the tumor cells will undergo death death process. So, this is again apoptosis. Sir. Most of the tumor cells, they will die. By which process? Apoptosis. That is a pathological apoptosis. Tumor is not something normal. Viral hepatitis is not something normal. So, cells are dying in some pathology, but in a more programmed way. They are deciding, they are terminating themselves, okay, by a programmed cell death. So, councilman bodies and cell death in uh, tumor, uh, tumor conditions, cell death in tumors, and whenever you use anti-cancer drugs, okay, whenever you use anti-cancer drugs, that will kill the cancerous cells. So, that is also because of apoptosis. So, cell death induced by anti-cancer drugs or cell death induced by radiation, radiotherapy, all these are examples of apoptosis. Okay. So, tell me what are the three pathological examples of apoptosis? Pathological apoptosis. One is consumer bodies, tumor cell death, death of the tumor cells and giving anti-cancer drugs, killing the cells. Okay. These are the three pathological uh, uh, examples of apoptosis and what are the physiological examples of apoptosis? Physiological apoptosis are during embryogenesis, sir. Second one is uh, elimination of self-reactive lymphocytes and endometrium, endometrial shedding during menstruation. So, 100% question will come from this area. Okay, this is the one thing which is very important and after this, this is the second thing and most of the time in exam, this was the question asked. This is the question asked during embryogenesis. The separation of digits is an example of physiological apoptosis. The cells are committing suicide. Okay. Now, last five minutes. Sir, how apoptosis is happening? There is something programmed, right? Programmed cell death. Caspase dependent. Okay. Sir, what exactly is happening in this apoptosis, sir? Look at here. Sir, actually, there are two ways by which a cell will commit suicide. Two ways, sir. Okay. Now, See, now there is this one cell. Now, it is simply sitting like this. Now, a signal is coming from outside. A signal is coming from outside telling that the cell have to die. The cell have to die. So, there is an extrinsic pathway. Okay, an extrinsic pathway. From outside, signal is coming to terminate the cell. Now, the cell will undergo death. So, this is called as extrinsic pathway. Now, you will understand. Don't worry. The extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So, what is this extrinsic pathway of apoptosis? See, now this is your cell, sir. This is one cell. Okay. Now, on this cell, on most of your cell, there is this one receptor present. This receptor is called as CD95. Okay, or death receptor. Okay, there is CD95, death receptor is present. Now, this, 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 death, uh, <coughs> this death receptor, Okay. Now, if it gets a signal, see from outside, this, this ligand is called as a fast ligand, FAS. Okay. Fast ligand. Now, this fast ligand is coming and binding with the death receptor. Now, it is a signal. Now, it is a signal that this cell have to undergo death. Okay. This cell have to undergo death. Signal is coming from outside that this cell, now it have to undergo death. Now, you should die. Now, you should die. Something like that. Okay. Now, fast ligand is binding with the death receptor that is CD95. Now, what happens there? Once this receptor is activated, this is a death receptor, actually trimerization will occur. Three death receptors will come and fuse. Okay, there is something called as a trimerization of the receptor. You know, not that much important. But once this CD95 receptor is activated, it will activate intracellularly. It will activate something called as FAD. Do you know what is FAD? Fast associated, fast associated death domain. When the signal is coming from outside, the death receptor is activated, the trimerization of death receptors will, ha will happen. Okay, three 
death receptors will fuse and they will activate the fat okay this fast associated death domain is going to be activated now what this fat will do now what this fat will do sir caspases now they are coming see now they will activate procaspase number 8 and 10 okay now these are the procaspases they are sleeping now they are the inactive caspases sir now this inactive caspases are going to be converted into active caspases caspase these are the enzymes these enzymes are getting activated just no till here no till here okay sir extrinsic pathway of apoptosis what is happening the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis signal is coming from outside the fast ligand is going to bind with the death receptor that is cd95 death receptor is activated trimerization of receptor will occur that activates the fad fast associated death domain is activated now, its fast associated death domain will convert the inactive caspases inside the cell. In each cell, inactive caspases are there. So, this inactive procaspase 8 and 10 are converted into active 8 and 10. Okay, now they are ready. So, these caspases are the first initial caspases, right? Okay, these are the initial caspases. So, these 8 and 10 are called as the initiator caspases. Initiator caspases okay there is one more initiator caspase i will explain you but just for now uh, 8 and 10 are the initiator caspases now they are activated i am ready now what is intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway pro caspase number 8 and 10 is converted into caspase number 8 and 10 well and good now what is intrinsic pathway of apoptosis sir no signal is coming from outside there is nothing coming from outside now cell is under stress sir now the cell is having more and more stress now cell is getting more and more stress sir. Now cell will decide this is not the time I should leave. Okay, I should not live in this stressful environment. Now do you know what happens? The intrinsic pathway means, okay, do you know what happens? See, actually in each and every cell, okay, in our cells may, okay, in our cells, there are some stress sensors present. Okay, in our cells, this stress sensors are present, MCQ, okay, FMG, NITPG, MCQ. These are the stress sensor. They will all the time sense the stress inside the cells. If there is more stress, less stress, is everything good or not? They are all the time sensing. What are the stress sensors? BIM, BID, BAD, NOXA, PUMA. BIM, BIM, BID, BAD, NOXA and PUMA. BIM, BID, BAD, NOXA, PUMA. These are the stress sensors. They will sense the stress. Everything normal or not? Normal or not? Normal or not? Now, whenever there is more stress on the cell, okay, microbiological stress, or immunological stress, or radiation, now, on the cell stress is increasing, sir. Now they are detected. Now there is more stress. Now they are detected, sir. Now do you know what they will do? Now they go, sir, these stress sensors, they will activate the pro-apoptotic factors. Now they will activate certain pro-apoptotic factors. Pro means what? They will do the apoptosis. Now the stress sensors, they are activating the pro-apoptotic factors. In each and every cell, see, in my every cell, there are two sets of factors present, two, two sets of, like, you know, these factors present. One is pro-apoptotic factors, anti-apoptotic factors. Pro-apoptosis means they will cause the apoptosis. Anti-apoptosis means they will inhibit the cell death. They will, they are anti-apoptosis. So, what are the pro-apoptosis? Again, FMG MCQ and as well as NITPG MCQ. In each and every cell, there are pro-apoptosing factors present. What are they? Back. Bax, BCL, XL, P53. So these are the pro apoptosis. They will kill the cell. They will kill the cell. Pro apoptosis. But in each and every cell, there are anti apoptosis factors also. What they will do? They will prevent the cell death. What are they? BCL2, MCL, BCL, XL. These are the anti apoptotic factors. Normally, normally, the pro apoptotic factors, anti apoptotic factors, there is a balance. Okay. Pro apoptotic factors and anti apoptotic factors, there is a balance there. But right now, right now, what is happening? Look, there is more stress. Okay, now there is stress on the cell, sir. Now the stress is going to activate what? Stress sensors, BIM, BID, BAD, North, some Puma. Now they are activated. Now, what the stress sensors will do? They will activate the pro-apoptotic factors. They increase the number of pro-apoptotic factors. And this anti-apoptotic factors are inhibited. They are inhibited, sir. Anti-apoptotic factors are inhibited. Okay, now tell me, now tell me what happens, sir, this concentration, their concentration increases, their concentration decreases, do you know what happens, 
intrinsic pathway okay in intrinsic pathway normally what is this organelle can you tell me what is this organelle sir this is the mitochondria this is the mitochondria now sir can you tell me what are this can you tell me what is this sir in the inner mitochondrial membrane in between actually outer mitochondrial membrane inner mitochondrial membrane in that space at intermembrane space there is a substance present do you know what is this substance called as sir this is called as cytochrome c which is the dangerous substance the dangerous substance in the cell sir cytochrome c so the cytochrome c actually it is present on the inner mitochondrial membrane it's present on the inner mitochondrial membrane okay now it will never ever it will never leak into the cell sir normally it will never come into the cytoplasm never but right now the cells are under stress the stress sensors are activated now what they will do now they will inhibit they will decrease the anti apoptotic factors now ek bar there look okay just look at here sir ek bar there dekho normally do you know what is this red color thing which i have shown here sir these are bcl2 molecules where you have said bcl2 so the important molecule bcl2 bcl2 is anti apoptosis it will inhibit the apoptosis no cell death no cell death but now same in stressful conditions this stress sensor do you know what they will do stress sensors they are decreasing they are inhibiting they are decreasing the number of anti apoptotic factors so now look here what happens sir couldn't able to still is okay but anyway now look here this bcl2 molecule it's gone the bcl2 molecule now it is not there when you remove the bcl2 molecule now what happens cell so cytochrome c is going to leak into the cell so the cytochrome c is now leaking into the cell sir now what the cytochrome c will do now cytochrome c once if it comes into the cell the cell will die for sure the cell is going to die for sure sir so the cytochrome c it is going to bind with a substance called as apaf1 apaf1 and do you know what is apaf1 apoptosis apaf1 for apoptosis activating factor 1 apaf1 cytochrome c is going to bind with the apaf1 now this combo this cytochrome c and apaf1 is called as apoptosome so now apoptosome is formed okay now what you are left with sir apoptosome now one thing i want you to know sir is there any signal coming from outside in this pathway any signal is coming from outside no signal no signal is coming from the outside it's the stress sensors bim bit back snox up you are they detect the stress whenever the stress on the cell is increasing they will inhibit the anti apoptotic factors they will increase the pro apoptotic factors so because of that bcl2 is gone now cytochrome c is going to leak into the cytoplasm cytochrome c binds with apaf1 forming apoptosome now what is this apoptosome doing the apoptosome is converting procaspase number 9 into caspase number 9 procaspase means inactive caspase this is active caspase so procaspase 9 is converted into active caspase number 9 so at the end of the day so what we have seen we have seen extrinsic pathway because of the death receptor death receptor pathway sir cd95 information is coming from outside signal is coming from the outside the cell should die see 8 and 9 caspases are activated because of the extrinsic pathway because of the intrinsic pathway caspase number 9 is activated so this 8 9 and 10 dekho 8 hai 10 here 8 and 10 here 9 so what are this 8 9 and 10 take a small note sir this 8 9 and 10 caspases these are the first caspases which are activated 8 and 10 are activated in the extrinsic pathway 9 is activated in the intrinsic pathway 9 is activated in the intrinsic pathway so these 8 9 and 10 are called as initiator they are the initiator caspases now initiator caspases are activated once 8 9 10 are activated that's it sir cell will die simple now initiation completed now what is the final thing execution initiator caspases are activated now you know it see dekho caspase number 8 and 10 separately i am writing why i am writing separately because 8 and 10 are activated because of extrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway this caspase number 9 is activated because of intrinsic pathway doesn't matter whether it's extrinsic pathway or intrinsic pathway once if 8 and 10 are activated and once if 9 is activated what they will do they will activate the executionary caspases these are the real heroes sir these are the real heroes 
who are the who are the real caste bases? Three, six, and seven. So caste base number three, six, and seven. These are executionary. Executionary caste bases. So what are they executing, sir? What are they executing? Final thing, cell death, apoptosis. So this caste base number three, six, seven. They activate what? Phospholipases inside the cell. Once phospholipases are activated, cell membrane damage. Organelles are organal membranes are going to be damaged. Proteases. Once the proteases are activated, the cell cytoskeleton, the entire cell cytoskeleton, the actin filaments, intermediary filaments, break down. Okay. And these caspases, they are very very important MCQ. Caspases are also activated. The enzymes called as the endonucleases. Endonucleases are going to cause the fragmentation of the DNA. The DNA is going to be chopped into small, small pieces. So, done. So, phospholipases kill the, da cause the damage to the, the phospholipases will cause the damage to the membranes. Okay, the membranes, especially not the outer membrane, not the cell membrane, uh, it, will, it will cause the damage to the membranes of the organelles. Okay, and proteases, once the proteases are activated, the cytoskeleton is going to be damaged and endonuclease, once they are, once they are damaged, the DNA material is going to be damaged. So, that's it. Once this happens, cell will die, sir. Cell will die. Now, for your exam, okay, need PG exam, what you should know is, okay, sir, proteases, eh, na? sir, what are, like, you know, what exactly these caspases are doing? Caspase, look, this is some important MCQ. What is the full form of this caspase, sir? This enzyme, caspase 8, 10. Sir, caspase means C for 16. Okay, these enzymes contain 16 amino acids, 16, caspase means 16, ASP for aspartate, aspartate, they will cleave, they will cleave the proteins at aspartate residues, they will break down the proteins at aspartate, at every aspartate residues, okay, so 16 aspartases, caspases means they are enzymes, they contain 16 amino acid and what they will do, they will break the proteins at aspartate residues. Okay, that's why, that's why I, 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 that's what I want you to know. So, aspartate, every aspartate residue, the protein will be break. And endonucleases, so this endonucleases, what they will do, they will cut down the DNA at every 200 base pair. After every 200 base pairs, one cut will be there, sir. Okay, they are going to make a chop after every 200 base pairs. Okay, now at the end of the day, just that they go because of the apoptosis. Okay, because of the apoptosis. What happened to the cell? Now, because of the caspases, these caspases activated the phospho phospholipases, proteases, endonucleases. The one cell, now it is fragmented into small, small fragments. Okay, the cell, one apoptotic cell, it first it will shrink. Now, it is going to be broken down into small, small pieces with the intact cell membrane. Remember, with the intact cell membrane, still the cell membrane is intact, the cellular contents are not leaked out. The cellular contents are not leaked out, sir. So, this one cell is divided into small, 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 small pieces. So, these pieces are called as apoptotic bodies. Okay? Apoptotic bodies. Okay? Now, in this apoptotic bodies, what do you feel? What do you see? Sir, in this apoptotic bodies, some cell organelles with the cytoplasm. So, cytoplasm will be there and some cell organelles are going to be there. The one cell is divided into small, small pieces, sir. Now, tell me. So, these apoptotic bodies, should we leave them just like that? No, we have to clear it, right? We have to clear the entire debris. Now, here is a lot of mess. There is a lot of debris. We have to clear it. Now, how can we clear it? MCQ. Sir, these apoptotic bodies, these apoptotic bodies, they will express, they are expressing something on their cell surface. This is called as a EP signal, sir. Actually, this is called as a EP signal. Okay, so this is nothing but, they go, it's a eat me signal. Whenever these apoptotic bodies are expressing these molecules on their surface, now the phagocytic cell, the macrophages will come and eat the apoptotic bodies, clear the apoptotic bodies. Okay, so the eat me signal, what is the eat me signal? What are these green color molecules? So these green color molecules are nothing but phosphatidyl serine and thrombospondin. Okay, mainly phosphatidyl serine, sir. The phosphatidyl serine is now expressed outside the cell. It is externalized. Actually, it is inside. Normally, in healthy cells, the phosphatidyl serine molecules are inside. But in apoptotic cells, now these phosphatidyl serine molecules are exposed out. It's like eat me signal. Okay, it's like eat me signal, sir. So, whenever a macrophage see this, 
phosphoryl serine macrophage will come and clear this apoptotic bodies so the apoptotic bodies are going to be cleared away so with this completed apoptosis is completed sir okay so in apoptosis what we have seen the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis apoptosis because of the death receptor pathway signal is coming from outside where procaspase number 8 and 10 are activated and intrinsic pathway because of the stress sensors activating the pro apoptotic factors inhibiting the anti apoptotic factors the cytochrome c is leaked at the end of the day caspase number 9 is activated so finally execution sir caspase number 8 9 10 activates caspase number 3 6 7 so this caspase is these are the enzymes they will activate proteases endonucleases as well as the phospholipases they will break the cell into small 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 fragment which are called as a apoptotic bodies and they will be cleared they will be cleared away by the macrophages okay because of this eat me signal that is nothing but the phosphoryl serine okay now final thing how to differentiate between okay how to differentiate between apoptosis and necrosis you have two i gave you two dead cells two dead cells sir i gave you i am asking you whether this cell have undergone apoptosis or necrosis now do a study called as dna gel electrophoresis Okay, DNA gel electrophoresis. If a cell is undergoing necrosis, it will show smear pattern, smearing. So this is a smearing pattern. Okay, the DNA is going like in one smear. Okay, it's like a smear, sir. So smearing pattern is seen. But if a cell have undergone apoptosis, we know in apoptosis endonucleases are activated. They will chop the DNA at every two hundred base pairs. So what you will see is see here step ladder pattern is seen. Okay, so step ladder pattern is seen in the apoptosis. Of course, step ladder pattern is also seen in necrosis. That's a different question. Okay, step ladder pattern is seen in both necrosis as well as apoptosis. But mainly, if you have to select one single option, one single option, apoptosis me step ladder pattern is seen. Necrosis me smear pattern is seen. Then this is one thing. How to differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis? And question, sir, what is the stain used by staining? By staining method, can you differentiate apoptosis and necrosis? so there is a stain called as a tunnel stain so this tunnel stain it is positive only in apoptosis this tunnel stain the cells will get uh, like you know they will be positive in apoptosis apoptosis cells are going to be positive for the tunnel stain and necrosis there is a negative tunnel stain is going to be negative in necrosis positive in apoptosis so with this the entire topic all integrations whatever need to be done whatever you should know for your exam i have completed sir okay so my thing is completed now you are part mcqs just mcqs i will show you the mcqs just answer it what is zenker's degeneration just tell me the answer a b c d can you tell me what is zenker's degeneration come on travel expert i will definitely i will definitely come to kazakh kazakh again okay to the caspian definitely i love that place Can you tell me what is answer A B C D? Travel expert, can you? Sir Zenkers, I said you. So Zenkers is yes, it is hyaline waxy hyaline degeneration or necrosis of the skeletal muscle in acute infections like typhoid. Which muscles is going to be most commonly affected? Rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis is going to be affected. Okay. So this is the Zenker's degeneration. Option number C. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Next. So these kind of clinical integrated questions will come in your exam. Okay. It's just a general pathology, sir. What if you are going to give the next exam clinical integrated? So once look at this. A 73-year-old man comes to the emergency department due to right-sided weakness and difficulty speaking. He is having right-sided weakness and difficulty speaking. The patient woke up with symptoms. an hour before arriving but felt when he went to the <coughs> went to bed last night he has a history of paroxysmal par, sorry he has a history of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation uh, that's it here is the key he is having what paroxysmal atrial fibrillation is atria fibrillating okay his atria fibrillating now you know when especially okay I, i don't know whether you can know it or not especially when you do your medicine then you will understand this whenever your atria are undergoing fibrillation There is a chance that in atria clots will form, sir. 
Mural thrombosis will occur. Clots will start to form in that fibrillating atria. <laughs> now clots. This is the one thing you should know. Clots. Now what these clots will do? These clots will go into the systemic circulation, will occlude the blood vessels. Now they go. So what is happening? So the patient is having a paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. But he is not adherent with the medical therapy. He is not taking any therapy. His body temperature is okay, normal. Blood pressure is 130 by 70, almost normal. And pulse is 110 per minute. Pulse is irregularly irregular. See, whenever you see the word irregularly irregular pulse, that is atrial fibrillation. So, that is a keyword. Whenever you see this keyword irregularly irregular pulse, that is atrial fibrillation. So, now he is having atrial fibrillation. Okay, so atrial fibrillation patients are at a risk of, remember atrial fibrillation patients are at a risk of stroke, stroke, thrombus will form in the atria, the thrombus will go into the cerebral blood vessels and will cause a stroke, sir. Okay, now physical examination, physical examination shows right sided hemiplegia, stroke came, paralysis, stroke came, okay, Hemisens uh, hemisensory loss, sensory losses are there, aphasia cannot talk properly, despite of appropriate treatment, the patient symptoms fail to improve. Okay, whatever you are doing, his symptoms are not coming to normal, fail to improve. Means something damage, permanent damage occurred, okay, over the next one week. Which of the following processes, they have given the entire medical case and what they are asking, which of the following process is most likely to be affected in the brain region? Ah, atrial fibrillation, stroke hai, so brain is have undergoing infarction. Brain, sir, brain is, some part of the brain is dead. Now tell me, what is the answer, A, B, C or D? Uh, most of the students have already given the answer. What is the answer? A, B, C, R, D. See, definitely the answer here is D, sir. Okay, D. Why? Because brain and pancreas are rich in enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes. So, they will undergo which type of necrosis? Liquefactive necrosis. So, hydrolytic enzyme induced tissue degradation. That is an example of liquefactive necrosis. Okay, so here answer is D. Uh, answer this. A 46 year old man present to your office with slowly growing neck mass. He is having slowly growing neck mass. The mass is stony hard on palpation. It is a stony hard sir. The neck mass is stony hard on palpation and seems to be fixed to the adjacent tissues. It is fixed to the adjacent tissues. After initial evaluation, see after initial evaluation, Combination chemotherapy is prescribed. You are prescribing him, him combination chemotherapy. Okay, you detect, you diagnose that it's some cancer. Okay, you are doing the chemotherapy. Several weeks later, the mass significantly decreases in size, and biopsy determinates many shrunken eosinophilic cells within the tumor. Okay, within the tumor, which of the following? See, I have said you tumor cells will die by. Giving anti-cancer drugs, if you give anti-cancer drugs, cells will die by apoptosis. The cells will die by apoptosis. In apoptosis, tell me, okay, in apoptosis, what will happen? The cytochrome C is going to leak out of the cell, sir. Okay, intrinsic pathway, cytochrome C is going to leak out of the cell. Binds with APAF1 forming apoptosome, right? So, which of the following substances released from the mitochondria most likely trigger the cellular changes? What is the answer? Who is going to be leaked out? Thank you, MC. Thank you, thank you. I'll definitely meet you again in KSMA. Okay, again I will do the patho there. Okay, in highly integrated way, more integrated way for your next exam. Okay, so the higher answer is cytochrome C. Cytochrome C is going to leak out. Remember one thing, tumor cells die via apoptosis. If you give anti-cancer drugs, that anti-cancer drugs kills the cancer cells via apoptosis. Now, answer this. A 65 year old uh, old woman, sorry, uh, sorry, a 65 year old man comes to the emergency department due to acute onset. Okay, acute onset, right flank pain, right side flank pain. Okay, nausea and vomiting for the past hour. Okay, his medical condition includes prostate cancer, he is already having prostate cancer and membranous nephropathy. Okay, blood pressure is 148 by 60 and pulse is 95. On physical examination, the patient appears to be moderately distressed due to pain and a diaphoretic means he is having little pain and he is diaphoretic means wetting is there. There is right costovertebral angle tenderness, right side, right side costovertebral, okay, costovertebral angle tenderness is there. Urine analysis shows hematuria, okay. Contrast enhanced CT reveals wedge shaped perfusion, see wedge shaped, 
I said you when the arteries are blocked, then the wedge shape. Whenever you see the word wedge shape, perfusion defect, wedge shaped infarcts means kidney, sir. Hematuria, kidney. Okay, the blood vessel is blocked. Okay. See now when you uh, go into your second year, third year, then you will understand. See what is the problem? He is having say membranous nephropathy. Okay, membranous nephropathy. You should know, again I will teach you this again in uh, renal pathology. Those patients who ever have membranous nephropathy, they will more likely to develop the renal artery blocks. Renal artery will be, the renal artery will be blocked sir, because of the clots. So, membranous nephropathy is one of the most important risk factor for the blocks in the renal arteries. Now, same thing happened here. There is a clot that happened blocking the artery leading to the wedge shaped infarct wedge shaped infarct sir real blood vessels are blocked wedge shaped infarct so which type of necrosis which type of necrosis sir answer is coagulative necrosis okay see the affected renal tissue is most likely to develop which of the following histological changes over the next several over the next several days coagulative necrosis the tissue architecture is preserved ghost cells okay denaturation of the proteins so coagulation of the proteins is going to cause the architecture preservation okay so with this completed so all the important topics in this class okay the class one of cell, uh, cell injury is completed tomorrow let's discuss about the cellular adaptations and the miscellaneous topics whatever were there in this leftover in this topic we'll continue tomorrow okay guys today class is completed hope the video is helpful for you okay the entire pdf will be the pdf will be shared in your in the sars telegram group bonsar telegram group the entire pdf will be shared so, this is how we are going to discuss every day. First, we are going to see the normal topic with the image based questions and the previous year questions. And for your next exam, we will do the clinical cases also. Clinical case approach also will be done. Okay. Okay, guys. See you. Good night.